it is a complete stack. It's not just uh, you know an OS or a framework or a couple of applications. It is literally a complete stack. It's everything you need to build a mobile phone um, from the ground up. And, and it's something which, when we're done, we're going to give away to the industry very liberally, uh, open source you know, licensing that would be you know, very simple for anybody. And we're going to make this available to the industry to allow innovation on top of the platform and, and to enable the, the industry at large to build and, and deploy devices with rich and powerful uh, features and functionality. Um, among those features, as Vic mentioned, is WebKit. Right? WebKit at the core uh, is the browser that we're shipping with Android. Um, it will enable you to take advantage of all the great web connectivity and web APIs that you're learning about at this conference and that are, that are available on an open web uh, platform. So WebKit browser built into Android, very easy to use. Uh, all, your, all your web applications will run very well. Additionally, um, we are raising the bar on the client functionality uh, within the platform itself, the framework. Um, all frameworks that are available on mobile devices today have buttons and menus and, and you know, just basic functionality that, that you need to build applications, but you kind of have to do a lot of work to, to start to create interesting applications on these devices. Well, with Android, we're building in some key uh, interesting functionality, such as a WebKit view. It's actually a view that is all the power of a web browser in a view that you can embed in your application and build on top of. You can build your own browser, add your own drones, do whatever you want to do to, to customize it. We also have a Maps view. Uh, the Maps view is, is just that. It's, it's Google Maps on mobile in a view. It's something which you can then take as a starting point for your application, and you can build on top of that, <coughs> innovate on top of that, build friend finder applications, do whatever it is you want to do using the full power of Google Maps on mobile at the baseline. And these are just some of the things we're doing to, to enable some, some interesting uh, functionality and applications on Android. So what you see here when I wake up the device is basically an unlock screen. This unlock screen is customizable, so you can basically choose what your unlock pattern is. For example, if you want a simple gesture to unlock your phone, you can do that. I guess that's not the one I use this time. Or you can have a more secure pattern. So in this case, let's say I trace a G, and that will unlock your device for you. So you can have a very friendly or complex, as secure as you like, uh, unlock gesture for your phone. Additionally, what we have here is the basic home screen uh, for Android. Um, there's a couple things on it, of course, basic stuff like uh, you know applications that you can launch. It's also got a status bar at the top. The status bar has all the things you would expect. It's got the time, battery life, signal strength, uh, and so on. It also, also has some, some icons at the top, notifications that, that come from other applications. You know, of course, you see that in other phones as well, where you've got a mail or an SMS message that, or a calendar that the phone wants to make you aware of. Well, in most phones, you actually kind of have to guess and say, well, you know, where did that come from? What app launched or put that notification in? Well, with Android, you just touch on the status bar and drag it down, and you have access to um, all the notifications, and this is available to you from any application in the system. You don't have to be on the home screen to pull on your status bar. Anywhere you're on the device, you click it, and then you can click on my calendar notification here to tell me I have a test at 9 o'clock, and you can dismiss it that way. So you can easily get your missed calls, read email, etc., through the accessible status bar. We also have uh, a home screen here that I mentioned before. It shows you applications that you can launch, uh, various apps I have on the device, uh, some favorites along the bottom. It also has a couple areas on it that you can move around to. So with a simple gesture of your hand, you can fling it around, you've got a Google search box, a clock, you want to move your clock around and customize it, simply drag it over. You can actually you know, customize things any way you like. You can also create shortcuts. Simply by pressing on an empty space here, it brings up a menu. Let's say I want to create a shortcut to my favorite browser bookmark. Let's say I want to you know, do the New York Times. And then it creates a New York Times icon here, which is very easy to access for your, for your web browser. You can also create shortcuts to other things. For example, uh, Gmail, uh, music playlist, contacts. For example, if I wanted to have a favorite contact on my, on my desktop here, just simply create it, and I have simple one-tap access to the contact card for Adam. Uh, not his real number, so don't worry about the kind of call in there. Uh, so I showed you a little bit about the home screen again, uh, very simple app launch. You notice that the, the uh, icons at the bottom are persistent, so you have your favorites along with all your customized content. We also talked early on about the WebKit and the web browser. So if I go ahead and launch the browser here, uh, it's going to take us to the, uh, the Google homepage, which is basically something they call Grand Prix. It's, it's basically Google um, made for mobile devices. It gives you um, a Google search box, uh, access to your calendar, access to your Gmail, uh, Etc. So basically, this app was written for you know, WebKit-enabled phones. Didn't have to be modified to run on Android. Very, you know, just works out of the box. Um, so any, again, any work you do that uh, is, is taking advantage of WebKit-enabled phones will work uh, on, on Android without any modification. 
The other thing I want to show you on, uh, on Android is some of the uh, cool zooming technology. So here we have, uh, we'll go to the Google I.O. site here. Um, and you know, this is obviously the conference drag. You can see the website for it. Uh, you can do basic things like flinging the page around. You can also um, use some zoom stuff. For example, if you double tap, you get a little magnifier. By dragging that magnifier around, pick the part of the page you want to zoom in on, and we can go see Chris Bona up close and personal there. Uh, you can you know, use this to navigate any site that you want to have access to and zoom in on a particular part of, of the page. Next, I'll show you uh, Google Maps. Again, a uh, very important mobile application. Um, we have a 3G network that we're on here, and this device is 3G capable, so you know, you'll notice that you know, with 3G capable networks, you have very quick, easy access to all of Google Maps data. Uh, you can switch map modes here, for example. We can go to satellite view, and you can watch all the tiles load in at 3G speeds, and you can imagine what your apps are going to be able to do when they build themselves on top of GMM uh, with 3G networking behind them. They're going to be capable of some pretty impressive and powerful things. And then uh, another app that I want to show you really quick is, you know, you've uh, probably heard about our developer conference, or sorry, developer challenge, where we uh, sponsored an event to, to get all kinds of entries. We've had just huge interest in that. Uh, we've seen a lot of different entries, and actually the thing I'm going to show you was not even an entry in the contest, but rather it was done by our friends at, at Namco. Uh, you know, quick little diversion, uh, you know, one of my favorite uh, classic games here, uh, Pac-Man. <coughs> Go ahead and start up a new game. Got some time to kill, so uh, he has nothing else to do, right? So you can watch me play Pac-Man for a couple minutes. So here we go. Um, unfortunately, I, the sound isn't coming across real well here, but it's got all the favorite beats, and it actually vibrates when you die, so it's, it reminds you that you got eaten by a monster. Uh, lastly, what I want to show you is some actually you know, newer technology, uh, something like uh, Street View here. Uh, you've probably seen Street View in the past. Um, you know, basically, the, uh, the technology that we have in here, which uses Street files that come in from the web. With a uh, flick of your finger, you can easily navigate around. But one of my favorite new features on Street View is the ability to use the built-in compass in this device. Switch on to compass mode. And then you can see that this device will actually track my movements. 